Welcome to the Calvary Ministry Program with Pastor Don Golden. For more information about this ministry visit our website calvaryministry.org. This program is viewer supported. We are located at 150 Golden Road, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Our email contact is dongolden at gmail.com. And now today's message. Good morning, folks. This is Pastor Don Golden from Calvary Ministry. Uh, so good to be with you again. Uh, the last two sermons and messages that we have had were based on the rapture and what to learn from the Bible about what the rapture will be, how it will occur, uh, what will take place and what will happen, all these things. Well, today we're going to do a little bit of a transition because right after the rapture, there is what the Bible calls the period of great tribulation. And we get indication of the word tribulation and use and what it's going to mean to our message today by going to the book of the Revelation and looking at the writings of the Apostle John and in particular the messages to the seven churches, the personal letters that Jesus the Christ sent to the early Christian community. Now keep in mind that the book of the Revelation deals with things that have been, deals with things that are, and it also deals with things that will be. The word, the word tribulation as John was given it in the book of the Revelation, it begins first in chapter 1 and verse 9. And what I will do is I will read directly from there, and then we will move through. John uses this word tribulation the first time. He's talking about present day experience of his tribulation. He says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and in the patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus the Christ. Paul considers the fact that he is a political prisoner on this island, small island, about 90 miles due south of Ephesus, his home, he considers this to be a period of tribulation in his life, and surely it was. Look at some of the circumstances. There were three major pagan temples on this island of Patmos, three major pagan temples, one to Aphrodite, the uh, uh, goddess of love, one to Aphrodite, well, I, I just said Aphrodite. The second was to Zeus, and the last one was to the emperor Domitian. So you have these three pagan temples, and there's no doubt that when Domitian put him on the island of Patmos to try to quelch this Christian movement, he undoubtedly thought that, well, if he didn't die from old age and the pagan practices, for sure those three fake deities against his one would overwhelm him. John calls this experience on the Isle of Patmos a time of tribulation in his life. That word in the Greek that they use there for tribulation here in verse 9 of chapter 1, Revelation, is the word thalipsis. And what it means, it means to be under anguish, extreme anguish, under persecution. It means to be in severe affliction. It means to be in unexperienced before distress. It literally means to be standing in the presence of all these evils. Now, where else do we find it in the book of Revelation 
the use of this word tribulation. If we turn to chapter 2 and verse 9, Jesus the Christ through the Apostle John is writing to the church at Smyrna. And he says in the very opening there of verse 9, now this is Jesus writing to the church. He says, I know thy works and tribulation. That word tribulation, as we have just defined it in the Greek language, meaning affliction, distress, extreme anguish and persecution. It's the same word that's used here, the lipsis. And he writes to the church at Smyrna and uses that word again. Now go down there one verse further, and Jesus uses it again. He talks about in verse 10, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. He's saying don't fear these things that are the tribulation. He says, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison. And of course, John is already in prison. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation. That word thalipsis is used again to talk about what this first century church of Smyrna, just as John has talked, is going to experience the tribulation a time of affliction, a time of suffering, a time of persecution. Literally, living with these devils all about you. John writes about these things under the divine inspiration of our Lord and Savior. Now, it says there in verse 10, where we've just read from, he says, Jesus says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I want you to understand the importance of that close there in verse 10. We're going to talk today in this message about the beginning of the period that is called the Great Tribulation when it is going to occur, and how it is going to occur, and the signs thereof. Jesus says, if we endure the tribulation in our present life, if we are faithful unto death, then we will inherit a crown of life. Now, as we studied in the two weeks prior, when we looked at the rapture, as a child of God, yes, there will be difficulties in our lives. It's not going to be free. But Jesus says, endure these difficulties, these temptations, these confrontations with evil. Be faithful and you will receive a crown of life. Now turn with me to the book of Matthew, and we're going to spend a little bit of time there. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus, these are the words of Jesus again. We just finished looking at verses that deal with the actual talking of Jesus to these early century, first century churches. We're going to look some more what Jesus has to say about this great tribulation to come. Chapter 24, Matthew, verse 15. Jesus says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not come down to take anything of his house. Neither let him 
who was in the field returned back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them get give suck in those days. Mothers with newborn infants. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Verse 21. Jesus says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as not from the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. I want to look at the word tribulation that Jesus uses here. And you notice in verse 21 that we have just read, Jesus talks about this time of tribulation with the adjective great tribulation. When we were studying the first three chapters of the book of the Revelation, we talked about the seven letters to the seven churches. At the end of chapter 3, at the conclusion of verse 22, the church is not mentioned again <clears throat> until we get much deeper into the book of the Revelation, near the very close in chapters 19 20 and 21. We use that with a sign that the rapture is going to occur before this great tribulation comes. So why should we talk about the tribulation whatsoever? Because there are those that are going to be left behind when the rapture occurs. And those people are the ones who are going to have to live through the great tribulation that Jesus uses here. All of us who are here right now in the hope of the rapture occurring. As we see in that transition between chapter 3 and chapter 4 of the Revelation, we experience tribulation yet in our time the present day until the rapture occurs. Jesus says, there shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. I look at the world's circumstances today. Israel, and the history of the people of Israel as it relates to us as Christians. I look at Israel today, and Israel is fighting a war that is evident on four different fronts. They are fighting the Hamas in the ancient land of Gaza. They are fighting the Hezbollah in the land of Lebanon. They are fighting the Iranian Taliban directly to the east and into Iran. They are fighting the Houthis down toward the Persian Gulf to the south and to the east. They have a war that is raging around their country on four different fronts. There is a lot of tribulation for those soldiers in Israel that are giving their lives, for those captives that have already died in captivity because of what Hamas did on the 7th of October in the year 2023. And then turn away from there and go just farther east to the Ukraine. Go to the Ukraine. There is war raging there. Russia aggressing Ukraine. And just recently it appears, it appears that possibly the Russians are going to bring North Korean soldiers into the conflict in the Ukraine. 
to move more toward annexing and taking the Ukraine for the nation of Russia. There is war all through this area. There is war all through this area. It says in verse 22 of chapter 24 of Matthew, And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It doesn't say how much is going to be shortened, but it says this. It says that there will be a salvation, a saving of God's elect. Who are God's elect? God's elect or the nation of Israel. We can point to them. Those that have faith in Almighty God there and those that serve because of the love for Almighty God and also those of us who are children of God as Christians, brothers, brothers to the nation of Israel, children of God, children of the elect of God in the same sense. We are here because God has called us into his, his salvation. You look further into this. And Jesus says, For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The rapture is going to occur, and the tribulation is going to occur. These are two absolute events. We are experiencing tribulation in the present. When is that going to end with the taking of God's children up in the rapture? I don't know. But it says in verse 31 of Matthew 24, And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, a great sound. That same adjective that's used over there for great tribulation. Yes, the tribulation will be great. And yes, there will be those that suffer and die to the tribu tribulation, the hardships therein, the anxieties, the bitterness. But there will come during that tribulation for us who are the faithful to Almighty God, there will come one day the sound of a trumpet, a great sound, so that we will hear it clearly and we will know at that time that God is calling us. And it says that the angels, the angels from heaven will gather us together. Listen, I live here in North Carolina, but the Bible says that God is going to take the elect from the four winds of heaven, from one end of heaven to the other. So, People I know in California, people I know in New York, people I know in Europe, people I all over the world, the angels, when the trumpet sounds, there will be an unmistakable knowing in heaven that God has called his elect. And we will be caught up in the air. Are we going to endure tribulation? Philipsis, yes, we're going to endure tribulation in this life. I want you to look at another thing here about the coming. If we go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 1 to 4. 2 Thessalonians Chapter 2 and verses 1 to 4. 
I want you to understand another thing that has to happen before this great tribulation occurs. Greater than the tribulation we experience every day. Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica. And the subject of the writing is the day of Christ. This day when we will all be caught up in the air, when we will be caught together, and we will be taken into glory out of the tribulations of this world. Paul says there in chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, verse 1, Now we beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Oh, that verse in the Bible that says, If God be for me, who can be against me? This is it. God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. There will come a time, the coming of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, that we will be gathered together from the four winds of the earth, from the four corners of heaven, we will be gathered together and we will be one in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says there in verse 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind. Don't let these things bother you, this tribulation, or be troubled, nor by spirit or by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Is at hand. How many times have we read that as we have talked about the day of the Lord, the coming of Jesus the Christ in the clouds, the gathering of the elect, the gathering of the children of God from all over? Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come, except their coming of falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, what they're saying is that the rapture and the what Jesus calls the great tribulation will not occur until the son of perdition, that man of sin, is revealed. Now, who is the son of perdition? The son of perdition is none other than the devil, Satan himself. What about John? What does he say more so as we look at him as he writes? Go to the book of 1 John for further identification of Satan, the devil, the great deceiver. Go to 1 John and go to chapter 2 and go to verse 22. And it says there, of this son of perdition, Satan. He says, who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Listen to this definition here. He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Before the rapture and before the great tribulation, there will be revealed the Antichrist. And we will know that he is the Antichrist because he is the one that denies the Father and the Son. He is a liar. It says here in verse 22 that he will deny that Jesus is the Christ. And because of that, he is the Antichrist. Antichristos in the Greek. Go to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. Let's look some more at this, who this Antichrist is. It says there in verse 3 of chapter 4, 
And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come of, in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even and even now, listen to what Paul says, talking about present day things. Now he was talking about the first Christian century. He says, heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Satan fell from grace, was cast from heaven. And ever since he was cast out, he has been trying to take the place of God. Satan is alive and well in the world. He will be the one who is called the Antichrist, the spirit that he infests into others that become servants of his will be spread and will be present in the world. Go with me to 2 John chapter 1 and verse 7. It says there, further, the writings of John, the same one who penned at divine inspiration, the book of the Revelation. Here under divine inspiration, he says this, for many deceivers that entered into the world. They're already here. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. How are we going to know those that profess the antichrist? And how are we going to know the Antichrist, when the Antichrist appears, because the Antichrist will deny that Jesus the Christ has come. He will deny that Jesus the Christ is the Son of the living God. By those things, we will know that he is the Antichrist when he begins his time of deception. What will happen to people who believe in the Antichrist in the last days? Let me give you a list real quick. If you turn in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5, this is what it says of those who are going to be children of the Antichrist. They will be lovers of selves. They will be covetous. They will be boasters. They will be proud. They will be blasphemers. They will be disobedient to parents. They will be unthankful. They will be unholy. And they will be lovers more of pleasure than lovers of God. Many of them, it says, will have a form of godliness even with this lifestyle. But by living those lifestyles, they are denying the power thereof. And what's the power of godliness? The power of God is the very power of salvation that God puts within us so that we are literally the temples of God and God is in us. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 25 says of the Antichrist and the people that become the children of the Antichrist that they will not worship God. They will not be thankful. They will become vain in their thoughts. Their hearts will become darkened. They will not love. They become fools and begin to live as such. They worship images. They dishonor their bodies. And they serve themselves 
before God. That's an image of what this Antichrist and what those who serve the Antichrist are going to be like. You look around the world today and what's the solution? Because we know that the tribulation is already here. We know that the great tribulation is going to come. But we know that the rapture is going to come as well. Jesus said, and I close with this thought. Notice I use Jesus throughout. Jesus says in John chapter 16 and verse 33, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you. Now most of what we have sermon from the day is from the words of Jesus himself. Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have peace tribulation Jesus uses that word but be of good cheer listen to what Jesus says to you yes tribulation will come in your life but Jesus says but be of good cheer listen to how Jesus closes I have overcome the world be of good cheer Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Now, I want to close as I always do. These words of assurance from Jesus to Christ can only be an assurance to you if you believe on Jesus the Christ, the living Son of the living God, that salvation can be put upon you by faith in him repent of your sins call upon the name of the lord and simply say god have mercy on a sinner such as me fill me with the spirit of your salvation let me stand firm in the promise and the hope of Jesus the Christ as my Lord and Savior. I pray that you have said that prayer. Amen. Thank you for watching the Calvary Ministry Program with Pastor Don Golden. For more information about this ministry, visit our website calvaryministry.org. This program is viewer supported. We are located at 150 Golden Road, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Our email contact is dongolden at gmail.com.